You say to me, Pastor, I'm a believer in Jesus, but I still have all these problems. I have all, all these difficulties. I don't get what's happening in my life. This is happening still, and this is taking place. I, I don't get it. How many of y'all have wondered, you know, you put your faith in Christ, but you're still having difficulty. Now, here's the reason. Because Jesus says, you have to come and follow me. See, it's not enough that we believe in Christ. Believing in Christ legally transfers us from Satan's family. Now, listen to me. From Satan's family to God's family. See, there's only two families on the earth. There's the family. Can I say it this way? There's the human family. Well, that's what I'm part of. No, no. If you're part of the human family, then you're going to have human troubles and human curses. But according to the scriptures, when you put your faith in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, you become a new creation. All of a sudden, I get born again. You ever think about what God is saying? You are born again. That means you're leaving the old family and joining the new family. The old family's cursed, but the new family's blessed. Amen? Now, you say, okay, pastor, I got it. I, I'm a believer in Christ, but it's not enough. You have to follow him. Because if you don't follow him and you just believe in him, yet still follow the devil, you cannot be claiming, I'm going to have the blessings, even though I'm following the enemy and following the world and doing everything that I used to do. I still do it, but I still believe in Jesus, though. You know, so, you know, before I became a Christian, I was a crook. Now I'm a Christian crook. <laughs> you know, before I followed Jesus, I was a thief. Now I'm a Christian thief. I used to be a, a wife beater. Now I'm a Christian wife beater. I use the Bible now. Praise God. <laughs> you see the problem we have? We haven't been taught a proper theology. We thought that by believing in Christ only, that would break the curse. No, believing in Christ, now here's, here's something important, redeems you from the curse. Okay? But it doesn't break it yet. You're redeemed, which means you're purchased to have the blessing, but now through your life, Following the life of faith, following the Lord Jesus, you then practically break it over your life. That's why Christians can still be cursed with problems, though their name is written in heaven and upon their death, they will enter heaven, but sometimes they'll actually enter it a little too quick because they're so cursed in this life. They're so judged because they didn't realize it takes more than believing, it takes following. Jesus over and over again told people, follow me, follow me. He didn't say, believe in me, please believe in me. Would you believe? He didn't, no, he said, follow me. Exodus chapter 20, this is a very important passage. Exodus chapter 20. Verse three, here's the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. So the first commandment is believe in only one God. But wait a minute, the second commandment is related to the first, but the second commandment is showing that it is possible to believe only in one God, but still have idols in one's life. Now watch this, verse four. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. That's the only commandment that God says your children. Three to four generations will be cursed if you fall into idolatry. Now, every sin will bring a curse. But what is it about idolatry in particular that brings a curse not just in your own life, but why does it affect other lives? Great question, isn't it? Well, to understand this, you have to understand what an idol is. Go, go, go to 1 
Corinthians chapter 20. I, I want you to see this. 1 Corinthians chapter 20. We need to see what an idol is. I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. There's no, okay. You're saying there ain't one. I know. All right, here it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse, verse 19. It says, do I mean that a sacrifice offered to an idol is anything or that an idol is anything? No, but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participants with demons. So now from this passage, what do we discover? An idol is a hidden demon. Now. So when a person practices idolatry, which is what? It is putting any material thing, anything equal or above God. Now, you still believe in God. Oh, Pastor, I don't believe there's other gods. I know you don't. You believe there's only one God. How many of y'all believe there's only one God? All right, you believe that. One God. But an idol is you treating something equal to God or above him. And when you do that, guess what you're doing? You're worshiping idols. You may not intentionally mean to worship idols. You may not think you're bowing down to them. But if you are putting them equal or above God, then you are bowing to them. And when you bow to it, an idol, you're bowing to a demon. The moment you bow to a demon, that demon comes into your life. All right, you say, okay, pastor, I understand that, all right? So a demon comes through our lives, comes through one's life through idolatry. But why does that curse three and four generations? Why does it curse his sons and grandsons and great-grandsons? I don't get it. What does that have to do with cursing the grandsons? Now we have to look at Matthew 12. Now watch this. Matthew chapter 12. This is Jesus' personal teaching on evil spirits, demons. You get demons coming into your life. How does that affect your son, your grandson, your great-granddaughter? How does that, how does that relate it? Here's the reason. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. When an evil spirit comes out of a man. All right. Can you all say man? So this is a person. But watch what happens. I want you to see how demons think. When an evil spirit comes out of man, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not, does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the to the what? Notice he did not say, I will return. The demon's not thinking, I'm returning to the man. He looks at the man and sees him as a house. Demons do not see you just as an individual person. He sees you as a house. Can I say it this way? He sees you as a household. He sees you as a family. In the Old Testament, the term for demon is the term familiar spirits. We've all heard that phrase, familiar spirits. It's in the Old Testament. That's what demons are called, familiar spirits. Now, what does familiar mean? It doesn't mean, oh, familiar, I, I know that person. No, literally, it's the Hebrew word obi, which means a family type of spirit. In Spanish, the word for family is familia. Familia, fam, and now demon, familiar. The root word for familiar spirit is the word family for family spirit. Do you realize when a demon comes into a person, it's part of the family? We're family. So when the demon comes into the father's life, he looks to the son and says, we're family. This is a family. See, so a demon doesn't look at a person that it left as a human being only. It looks at that person it left as a house. 